Dribbling is one of the most fundamental skills in football that you absolutely want to keep getting better and better at if you want to improve as a player because as you move up the levels, your dribbling is going to be, need to be crisper. It's going to be, uh, need to be more in control, faster, more efficient. So if you are struggling with your dribbling or you just want to get it to that next level, here's what's going to fix that. Here's what's going to help you. That's coming up next. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Dave and this is Simply Soccer if you're new to the channel where I am releasing videos every single week to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. Now, if you want even more help with that, make sure you download my free ebook, Game Changer. I will link that in the description down below because it's a 50 plus page ebook that's gonna help you in so many different ways. So I wanna make sure you've gotten that if you haven't already. Now, without further ado, let's move into the first thing that is going to help improve your dribbling if this is something you're struggling with and, and really is gonna help you take this to that next level where you need it to be. And number one is keep the ball close. You know, one of the more difficult um, but also one of the most useful skills when dribbling that I found is being able to keep the ball in control while dribbling at speed or just to keep it in control in general. You see the best dribblers in the world do this, the Messis, the Hazards in his prime, and so many other players um, we could throw in there that are able to keep the ball close while they're doing all the different things they're doing with the ball. Now the reason this is so effective is because if they need to, they can get their body in between the man and the ball. They can cut the ball and take the ball away from an opponent very quickly as well, where if the ball's further out, it gives the opponent more chance to take the ball from you, get their body in a better position um, to win the ball, and so you don't usually want to allow this to happen. Now, sometimes you will push the ball further out ahead, but you want to get really good at the skill of being able to dribble with the ball in close control. Typically, you want to use the top or the outside of your foot to do this, but you'll use the inside, the sole, and many different parts of your feet. And we're going to go over some drills coming up in a second that are going to help you with this area. In fact, before we move on, put in the comments, I am improving my dribbling every single day. Align yourself to that, and then make sure you're getting out there and practicing the drills we're about to go over in number two. And number two is essentially practice of effective drills often. And these are drills that are gonna work on multi-levels of your dribbling, multifaceted areas of your dribbling. So not only dribbling when you need to slow it down, but also speed it up, dribbling in close control, dribbling and then cutting and turning. You wanna work on all of these different things often because these are things you're gonna find useful in your matches. And so I already have a video that goes over five different cone drills that you can do that are gonna work on your dribbling. And this mixes some close control dribbling. This mixes going from more of a slow, speed to a fast speed, keeping the ball in control, cutting and turning. And so it's gonna be a great video for you to get some drills that are really going to help you improve this area. So make sure you're doing these drills often if you really wanna see results in your practice as you're practicing your dribbling. And if you really want to speed up the process, you can get into my course, Ultimate Soccer Skills, which is all about dribbling, um, about close control with the ball, skill moves and things of that nature. And I'll even give you a discount since you're on this video and you're engaging with this video. So I'll link that down below in the comments if you are interested in learning more. So if this video has been valuable to you so far, make sure you hit that like button and we'll move on to number three. The number three is so crucial because you might be able to dribble very effectively when you're by yourself, but you need to be practicing this in game situations. And what does that mean? That means when there's actually pressure, when someone's trying to take the ball off you or there's space to be exploited, but it will be closed down. You need to work on different situations that are actually gonna replicate what you'll find yourself in matches because then you'll know what to do in those situations when you're actually in your matches. So you need to grab a friend or, or get a training session going or do this in your own training sessions where you have someone actually trying to take the ball off you. You know, a great way to do this is just small sided scrimmages, 3v3s, 4v4s, even 2v2s. These are such great little training tools because it's intense, it's quick, there's not as much space, which means you have to keep the ball in close control, play quickly. There's a lot of other areas this will also work on, but you need to be putting yourself in those game situations. And even when you're practicing by yourself, pretend someone's trying to take the ball off you. Actually do your drills at game pace and how you think you would do them if you were in a match because that's gonna help translate over to your matches when you're in those situations. Number four is also hugely important and it's learn when. Dribbling is not only about, or being good at dribbling is not only about being good at the skill itself, it's also being smart with your dribbling, knowing when to dribble and when not to. The best and most effective dribblers understand this. They know when they are over dribbling and they know when they are under dribbling and they have a good balance with it. There are times when dribbling is the best thing to do and some players shy away from doing that. But there's also players who we all know who over dribble, beat two or three and then lose the ball, 
right? So you need to find that balance, when to dribble, when not to. And again, this will come from watching professional matches a lot, like watch some of the best dribblers and watch when they go for it and when they don't. Also look at their mistakes and go, you know, could they have chosen a different option? But also learn from your own games, your own situations, your own practices, in which situations you should be going for it um, and which situations you should not be going for it. So make sure you have dribbling IQ, so to speak, uh, knowing when to dribble so you're not over dribbling, but also knowing, you know, when you are under dribbling and dribbling would actually be an advantageous thing to do. And the more you know which is which, the more you can choose the right option. And number five, I just want to give you a little training hack that worked so much for me when I was a kid, and it's get the ball at your feet often. I mean, when you're at home, dribble it around as you're walking from one place to another, even take a ball with you as you go out and about through your day. You know, I used to either take a football, a tennis ball, or one of those mini kind of size one balls with me everywhere I went. And this actually helped my dribbling and my touch on the ball, my comfortability on the ball so so much. Um, seriously, like it will help more than you know. Now this is a long-term overtime thing, but the more touches you're getting on the ball, the more comfortable you are with the ball, the better you're going to be with your ability to dribble. Now you still need those deliberate intense sessions of actually practicing dribbling at game speed, um, tr uh, practicing game situations, but this is a little hack that can really help you just get more comfortable on the ball. And the more comfortable you are on the ball, it's going to improve areas like your dribbling, um, like your skill moves and so many other things. So it's a little thing I'm going to throw in here that can be helpful. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you're getting out there and actually working on these things we covered in here. Again, you know, theory does not cover the price of admission to greatness. It's one of my favorite quotes. Essentially what it means is you will not improve and see results and get to where you want to get to unless you put into action the theory, unless you actually, you know, put into action what we've gone over here, what you see in other videos or whatever else it is. If you're seeing drills, make sure you're actually practicing them. Anyway, thank you again so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.